Okay, welcome everybody to Wall Street Reporter's next Super Stock live stream where we bring you the leaders of the new bull market. So again, the goal with the next Super Stock program is to bring you those stocks which have 10x to 100x upside potential. Companies going after massive multi-billion dollar market opportunities at a key inflection point with multiple catalysts in place. But what makes the situation we're in right now even more interesting is that values Values have been crushed by the mega bear market over the last two years. Many of these stocks are down, you know, 80%. I mean, the, the ARK indexes are down 80 90%. But the good news is that a new bull market always emerges from the despair, from the ashes of, of this type of destruction. And we're seeing it right now. And uh, we're going to talk today about how Next Tech is really positioned right at the epicenter of what's going to be the white hot mega trend that is going to be the new bull market. Uh, so Evan, I'm going to give we're going to start in just a sec, but I want to kind of give a setup for the audience so they understand exactly what is happening right now. And, and you can you can chime in here. But, um, you know, I, I, what, I, what I've seen and, you know, I think everybody watching could agree is every bull market begins with something that emerges as the hot new technology. Uh, like in the 90s, we saw it was, you know, Wintel, you know, the Windows 95 Intel, which then led to the dot-com boom. But we started with the AOL, you know, then the, the dot-com boom. That market collapsed. And uh, the 2010 bull market, really what began in 2009, 2010, that was led by social media, Facebook, et cetera, et cetera. And companies yeah. harnessed. So remember, the 90s was companies that harnessed you know, the Windows 95 boom, the uh, dot com. Uh, the 2010s was companies that harnessed social media, the network effects, whether it was, you know, CRM, whether it was Salesforce, whether it was Twitter, Facebook, uh, uh, you know, uh, all these other guys. What we're, what we're seeing now is, is amazing. AI, AI is clearly I mean, really at the early stages of what's going to be a major mega trend, and the companies. That are going to be benefiting most of the mega show are those are those that harness the power of AI, and that's what we're going to we're going to talk about. Yeah, today. yeah. I mean, you even saw like cloud computing uh, has also been a mega trend, wow. right? And and uh, you're right. Uh, you know, in, in these bear markets, um, bull markets are born, and so that's you know historically what's what's happened over and over again. And technology has always been the game changer for the market. You know, it's kind of the the engine of growth. It's the thing that people get most excited about. Uh, not not so much about Coca-Cola or McDonald's, right? <laughs> so from uh, our perspective, you know, if you look at what Next Tech brings to this party uh, and, and the next bull market, we bring 3D modeling. We bring really an array of technologies. Uh, our human hologram, HollowX, is now uh, you know starting to become a much bigger deal. Our 3D modeling business obviously has taken off with Amazon getting behind it and, and other big box uh, retailers as well. And the thing that's allowing us to posi be positioned is AI. You know, you touched on it. We don't really talk about it much, Jack. Like that's you know, what we should. That's today. I think let's focus on because I think the AI aspect of Next Tech has not been valued by the market. Here's the crazy thing, right? If we look at some of the hottest stocks, the companies which created the massive value in the last two decades, which two companies? Amazon, Netflix. What are those two companies? What was their what was their competitive advantage? It was the AI, right? It was the AI, yeah. the recommendation yeah. engine for. I mean, AI, a, a, AI, AI is essentially reinventing everything online. Search engines, you know, you see like Microsoft, uh, their Bing is now uh, they're trying to acquire uh, Chat GPT, which is owned by OpenAI. Uh, it's a twenty nine billion dollar valuation. They're paying ten billion dollars for a 49% stake. Um, it's re going to reinvent uh, photo and graphic editors like Photoshop. And if you look at Toggle 3D, it's all based on AI. It's wow. all machine learning. Everything that we're doing is in alignment with the market. 
because we're micro cap, we don't get the same valuations as these big mega, you know, tech companies. But that's really the value. That's really, the, you know, I guess the opportunity, at least in my mind, where if AI is game changing technology, which we all believe it is, I mean, it's playing out in the market. There's uh, new valuations, Jasper, which is another generative AI startup that was founded in 2021. That's only, you know, that's two years, three years after Next Tech. They just raised $125 million in October. They have a billion and a half value, uh, billion and a half uh, dollar valuation. Stability AI, which is just an image generating uh, AI company founded in 2020, raised $101 million. Uh, with a billion dollar valuation. So you have smaller uh, generative AI companies uh, that are getting billion dollar unicorn valuations. These are just startups. And then you have Next Tech, which is using the AI to create products, to, yeah. to so create exactly, value. I mean, you know, evidence, what's, what's really interesting is this, right? Like Next, Next Tech is really straddling two major mega trends, right? You have at the core of it, at the core of it, the core business of Next that really is creating these 3D product models, these AR models for e-commerce, which is a five trillion dollar market that's pivoting to this Web3 3D model world. And again, we've talked about before the benefits. Amazon, I mean, look, there's no better validation than Amazon, you know, giving you the CF, you know, what is it? Is it a five, seven million dollar order? I mean, it's growing. You got other uh, major, major you know, blue chip yeah. e-commerce companies coming to you. So at the core of it, you know, we have this this boom in this 3D model, you know, creating these 3D models. But what's giving Next Tech kind of the competitive advantage is essentially, we, I think we've seen it before our own eyes, is really, uh, you know, the, the, the proprietary AI. AI technology. Yeah. Because yeah. originally, when we first started talking, like, it was almost three years ago, it took, I don't know how long it took you and how much it cost to create a 3D yeah. model. I mean, what was it? It was like... It took us like a week or more to create yeah. 3D, a single 3D model. And we would, uh, you know, it cost us anywhere from $300 to $3,000. I mean, it was painstaking, right? Yeah. And, and, and so, of course, you can't scale that. Now, with AI, we have filed patents. Uh, we have patents that, that you know, we're, we're, that are soon to be filed. It is game-changing technology that is allowing us to solve the multi-billion dollar 3D model supply problem for e-commerce. It's a global problem. Nobody has been able to crack the code. We believe that we are solving that problem using uh, you know, generative AI. We've talked about it in yesterday's press release where we're essentially creating a parts-based library of 3D models uh, the, we're accelerating the development of that. We're past 100,000 3D model parts, but when we get to a million, two million 3D model parts, and it's growing exponentially because every single model we make has three to six parts. So one model equals three to six. And if you, if you keep on extrapolating out, uh, Jack, what ends up happening is we essentially have every part made in our 3d library that can then be harvested by our ai and turned into a 3d model on demand so think about it we only need maybe a million two million 3d parts to make pretty much every single model i'm not talking about like super it's sort of like dna it's sort of like you have the, those are the building blocks it's essentially next that will own the building blocks to creating every type of part for the, the, have the library it's almost like um you know having uh, all the letters in the alphabet and then you 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 know you're able to compose you know uh, an essay um it's like if you own the the you know the alphabet <laughs> then there's nothing you can't you can't do right as far as you know so when it comes to 3d models we're taking a different tact a different approach and so with, we think that within the next 12 months, uh, we're going to have a moat around our uh, 3D modeling business that will be uh, essentially uh, putting us in a position where we, we won't be able, no one's going to be able to challenge it. I'm not going to use the word monopoly because that's 
yeah, no, got a negative but connotation. Gap, but the gap, but you know, if you're creating a massive distance because you know, the more it's this is this is the beauty of, of AI. This is what makes these companies so valuable, is that you know, you know, as as the AI learns, it gets better and better and better, and then and it takes a long time for other companies to catch up because again, the AI takes a while for people to learn, for the machines to learn yeah. also, right? Yeah. So you I mean, have this massive yeah. head start and it gets bigger and bigger and the distance gets wider. And, and then you have it's, it creates this like a real flywheel approach where it drives the whole growth of, of the business. Uh, and I yeah. think this is the, the exciting part about Next Tech that you know I think it's I think investors maybe are starting to kind of realize, but they really it hasn't quite clicked in the market no. that no. really the AI this is a thing that really unleashes the exponential growth potential. Because look, two years ago you had the technologies, everything it was great, but you weren't able to scale it. Now the Amazon order, the, the, the seven million five million seven million dollar order, is you're only able to do it because of the AI, which allows you to scale. And of course, the more you do it, the, the AI learns yeah. even better, and, and become, become, yeah. become even more valuable. Yeah, but the reality is, Jack, is that the Amazon order is the tip of the iceberg. It really is a drop in the bucket when you think about the amount of revenue that's going to be driven through Next Tech's three D model library it's in my view massive meaning we're just just at the beginning of a multi-year run on 3d models where everything in vr everything in ar this whole metaverse that that everybody's talking about it's all about 3d and we are going to be the the company that people come to and it's going to be automated meaning i'm going to sit back and wake up in the morning and by, you know, overnight, there'll be, I don't know, thousands of 3D models that will have been made used by, by our generative AI that's going into our parts factory. Once we get the million, two million parts, the AI is going to create the models autonomously. Right. Yeah, you understand this is, this is, how this is the big thing. Thing. like this like, is the generative AI. This is the this generative is, AI. That, that's yeah, this is gonna, this is like all those guys. Yeah, this is AI. This is you know, look, it's a little scary because you know it's like who's in charge, right? Who's controlling this? But the whole point is, is that the value of of being able to create three D models for ecom. Let's be crystal clear. We're laser focused and targeting ecom. Think of Target, think of Walmart, think of Amazon. Think of all the products that you shop for online. Every one of those products is going to be turned into a 3D model. Every one of them. Right now, it's just a small fraction. It's like a half a percent of the, the, the products that are out there. And so if you think about that, and you think about Next Tech having an AI machine that's able to go into its parts library and put together a 3D model autonomously toggle 3d is a piece of the workflow so there's this whole assembly line that's automated it's not a human assembly line it's an ai assembly line that's literally automation at its uh creating 3d models at scale for ecom and it's on demand you know you just again you you just show the ai a photo of your product that you want made and it goes to work. And some of the products can be made in seconds. You know, if you're talking about something simple, like a painting, a rug, or uh, something like that, it could, it could happen extremely, extremely fast. And some of the products might take a few minutes to be turned into uh, 3D. But if you think about what I'm describing compared to where we were, again, you know, a couple of years ago, uh, this is that moment in time where Next Tech really does start to accelerate in terms of its its ability to generate revenue quarter after quarter after quarter. Uh, and you know, I don't I don't see it really ending like because there's new products being made every day, right? So even when we have this parts based library, um, it doesn't really end, right? Because new products are coming to market. Every year, there's always a new couch or chair or, or new design of, of sneaker or, or clothing design. And so 
it it just doesn't really end as long as people keep you know buying stuff online uh our our business is going to continue to grow and you know i just i mean it's just super exciting time jack yeah no so, so the reality is this it's kind of like i i you know the the ai it being able to use this generative ai and and, and you've been doing i mean this has actually been at the core of next step from day one it's just now it's becoming more and more important and that's the thing that's really driving the the you know the company's competitive advantage but that really kind of you know this this really creates the the inflection point because again now you're really able to scale the, you know the, the, these 3d models and i think you mentioned that how big is the market opportunity for you know the, pro, the what you're selling which is 3d models you know for e-commerce is it is it i think you mentioned like it's like a, a billion or a hundred like what's some crazy number because the market overall e-commerce is five trillion right there's millions of SKUs. they yeah. only have the 3d models that's a major show as they're going to to, the, to that to those 3D models away from flat JPEGs. How big is this opportunity? Um, you know, it's it's hard to quantify uh, exactly, but um, we're estimating that it's in the hundred billion dollar range. That that's um, kind of what if we were going to turn every 3D every product into a 3D model, let's say tomorrow we would generate a hundred billion dollars in revenue. So that's a big number. Now, now we're not making projections that the company's going to no. hit a hundred. No, but we're the not. Total mar- the total market, the addressable market is, is you're saying a hundred billion for 3d product models for 3d models. Yeah. yeah. And, and it could get even bigger because, you know, if you think about animation, you know, if you think about uh, games, um, video games and and uh, you know those games now have photorealistic 3D models. They're no longer just um, kind of you know cartoony 3D models. The, the the video games are now actually starting to look at 3D models as part of their um, their needs. What they need to create a realistic landscape for you know whatever whatever video games mm. that they're they're trying to sell so and then if you think of uh vr 3d models are becoming uh much more prevalent in the world of vr so you know right now we're only talking about e-commerce but there's more demand starting to creep into the market from vr and from uh gaming outfits that are looking for 3d models so it really, you know, again, we're focused on e-com because that's where we started. Remember, we used to have an e-com site. <laughs> yeah, so we started with e-com. But we're starting to see now that there's more demand outside of e-com. And that's just kind of, uh, you know, green pastures so for us to grow in. We could continue to, you know, to grow our business even beyond e-com. So, so here, but here's the thing, right? So, like, you know, we're talking all this stuff, and people are probably looking at, oh, like, and they're wondering, okay, well, well, it sounds great, whatever, but what's the proof? Like, what's I think at the end of the day, investors want to well, okay, is this for real? And I think the proof yeah. is well, we're going to be pre-announcing. Yeah, we're going to be pre-announcing our uh, our 2022 numbers. Okay. Um, could be uh, as soon as uh, this week. Okay. Okay. Could be, could okay. be next week. Um, okay. what and we what kind of what kind of what kind yeah, of I, I would I would I would estimate that our uh, year over year 3D modeling business grew by over 250 um, percent, which is not insignificant. And if you look at 2023. It looks to be another year of triple digit growth. You know, it could go from uh, 250%. You know, I, it's hard to predict, but you know, you could see 250, you could see 500% growth. It, you know, it, it, obviously things have to fall into place. You need to, you know, things have to go right. Um, and, you know, as of today, everything is moving in the right direction, but you can't predict. Uh, you know, it's hard to predict anyway what's going to happen 12 months from now. So 
from today's from today's perspective, 2022 was a breakout year for our 3D business. 2023 is set up to be a record-breaking year for our 3D business, again, which is driven by the AI. And uh, we just don't see it stopping, Jack. You know, you know, Evan, what's 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 really interesting is the numbers you mentioned is like, you know, and people, oh, 250% growth. The reality is those are unicorn numbers. If you look at any of these like unicorn multi-billion dollar <laughs> starts, you know, the gro their growth rates, what gives them the, those valuations is they're addressing massive markets, but they're growing, you know, those those 300% numbers compounded over and over. And you have like three, four of those years back to back. And all of a sudden, you know, you yeah. have this is what the market is going to be paying for. Now, it's not paying for today. The market is not paying. You know, the, we're, we're basically this is I think right now this really reminds me of like the early 90s when you had all the great companies like what, what became huge with the dot com boom. They were trading for nothing like or, because the, the stuff wasn't quite good. Even let's use the case of AOL. To, this sounds very quaint. AOL sounds very quaint. But if anybody remembers, that was the hottest stock of like the dot. I mean, that was that was the epicenter, the white hot center of the dot com boom. Now, I know personally a guy who made fifty million dollars with AOL. He started, I think, with like a hundred grand, like something like fifty or hundred grand, and, and he parlayed because the stock. You remember, you know, the stock went on a massive run, right? Yeah, yeah. But it started in the mid nineties. It started like around ninety five. Before the internet, you know, as we know, the, I mean, they had the internet, but it really right. nobody was under the, the what what was the inflection point? The inflection point for AOL. Jack, I had an AOL account. Everybody yeah. had an AOL account. Right. There wasn't anybody that didn't. Today, so, well, yeah, if they're gone. But but yeah. the thing is, but the inflection point for AOL happened with when all of a sudden everybody said, "Oh, the World Wide Web." The web before that, it was just like you know this mail thing, whatever. And and now what we're seeing, the, so the, the same thing is happening with. The 3D model space, the inflection point, the re what's making it happen is being able to use generative, you know, this generative AI, and this is going to create, I think, the next generation of, you know, this is going to be the next unicorns are going to are emerging right now. This is what we're, I think, what the opportunities for investors. I mean, it's exactly the same setup, very same. Yeah, I mean, Google is heavily invested in AI. I mean, I think of Google as an AI company. If you think of Amazon. What broke them out um, was AI, right? Where they, you go onto the Amazon site and you would search for a product and the AI would serve up products from your previous search. It would know what you're looking for. And I remember like the first time that happened, I was like, whoa, how does it know? And so when you think about AI combined with AR, you're talking about um, a very, very powerful technology set. And, you know, from again, from my perspective, um, we're looking at not just growing our business organically, but I'm even looking at acquisitions that would accelerate our growth um, so that, you know, instead of um, us doing everything in house, you know, we can acquire some some companies that have some cool technology and some customers and bolt that on to our, our existing business. And that's just rocket fuel for our growth. So, you know, we're looking at not just growing everything in-house organically, which we, so, so like 2022 is almost like a reset year for us. It really was a reset year. We divested ourselves of our uh, e-com business and pet supplement business. Um, we uh, changed auditors. We, um, what else did we do in 2022? Yeah, spin out, there was a spin oh, out. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. I, mean, I, think, I think I would say, I, I would say had, 2022 was really like the early stage of the transformation. It's almost like a butterfly emerging from the cocoon. It was a caterpillar, <laughs> and now, no but, no, but really, now you're really set up to fly because originally the, it was yeah, crawling. The, the, the caterpillar. Are you the butterfly or the caterpillar, Jeff? No, no. The next step was originally the caterpillar, and and last year was it was in the cocoon. You know, it was developing all the stuff, and now it's able to fly. It's the AI. No, no, no seriously, the, the, the generative AI is the ingredient that makes the butterfly fly now. At this point, this is what I mean. This is this. I mean, no, really. Like, how else would you have gotten the Amazon contract unless you were able to produce models at scale? You couldn't have done it two years ago. You can no, do no. it now. 
yeah. because of the yeah. AI. Right. So it, it, it's like, I, I don't know if next tech is, I mean, it's almost like, I don't know if it should be valued in, is it? Because, you know, I think, I think, I think actually the opportunity for investors is really that they've been thinking of it as an AR company. And AR was kind of like, it wasn't such a hot theme. Yeah, just to add, an AI company. Just to add some more context, like, you know, Sequoia Capital. You've heard of those guys, right? Yeah, sure. Best cool. VCs, huge VCs. Huge VCs, right? Like, those are the guys that originally invested in Apple and Google yeah. and Amazon. Like, these guys are trend spotters. They yeah. get in early and they they know okay they have publicly come out and said that generative ai not even said they've written it written generative ai has the potential to generate trillions of dollars in economic value and that they are basically saying like you just said that there is an element to this that feels like the early launch of the internet and that is very, very powerful. Um, and if you think about the analogy that you're, you know, you just said, like, you know, the early days of the internet, you had the companies like AOL and, and things like that that just went parabolic. I do believe, I mean, there's no reason why that can't happen again with AI, 3D, AR, you know, Apple's coming out with their uh, computer vision glasses. Um, and we're kind of positioning ourselves, you know, we have AR way, like we just talked about as a spin out spatial computing platform. AR way is also using AI. Uh, I mean, you, I think you froze. Uh, Evan, your internet connection is, yep, let's see, what's going on here? Okay, stand by. uh stand by stand by we have to uh see what's going on here i think the in evans in internet okay Evan, you're back what happened i don't know the your internet went out uh you were saying something you 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 froze it before you I think before, the ai the ai was listening it, the it, ai was listening it, it, listening it said you know what i'm <laughs> <laughs> like, so, gonna just kick him out yeah. So here, you know what? What here? What's really look again? The the big. I think the big idea is this. I think this is what. I, I don't think investors really have woken up to this. It, no, it's clear that they haven't because look, we're at the early stage right now of the next bull market, and it's going to be driven by, you know, generative AI. I, I mean, we're seeing this Chat GPT, and this thing has gotten a million users in the first thirty days. One million users, which is more than anybody else in the history of. I don't know whether it was Facebook, or anybody, ever, ever, yeah. ever. Yeah. And, because, and this is a game changer because it really is. I mean, like, I, I've never seen anything as, like, like a wow like this as maybe it was, like, the internet when I first saw the web. It was like, yeah. wow, I can see the potential. Yeah. I can see this you know, as, like, and now this, but this thing is, and again, the money, the value is going to accrue to the companies. It's not so much AI. It's the company. It's, like. It, it's not like the the it's really the companies that harness the AI that to, to, to really drive their business to the you know to for you know to parabolic growth like what what Amazon did using you know for the recommendation engine what Netflix has done what we see others and and again Nextech is using it for this particular three D model thing and again I think essentially what you're going to have with this library you're talking in this library of three D parts it's almost like a like an Adobe type of suite which becomes extremely valuable. I mean, we saw Adobe paid, what is it, $40 billion with a B for Figma. Um, yeah. Do they have a 3D product uh, suite? No, no, I don't actually think Adobe is the, the right. So think of it more like Getty Images, where it's like 
you know, you have, but it's not even that. It's, I, I actually think that we could license the tech out to all the big e-com players. So basically, I don't know, think about the oh. top 50, right? And we yeah. just license it out. It's literally a, 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 a platform that they pay a monthly fee to and they just churn 3D models and it just populates onto their website. That's kind of how I see it playing out where instead of right now, we're signing up uh, deals with Amazon or with you know Target, Walmart or whatever. Imagine this is just, hey, Target licenses it. They don't even talk to me. They just license our platform and pay us a monthly fee and off they go. That's, I think, the future of AR ties okay. 3D. Okay, like basically like what Getty Images does and what uh, it looks like yeah. Canva. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Guys. Exactly, exactly. It's just the licensing. Once we have the scale with the, the number of 3D model parts hmm. that are needed to supply everybody, it's kind of game over literally game over there's mm. nothing it'll be like everybody else all of our competitors will essentially just go out of business because they're focused on delivering a, a single 3d model but if you think about an entire part factory of a, a library that's able to generate 3d models on demand and then licensing that to the to all the top e-com sites even alibaba um, you know, would, would want something like that. Even, you know, all the manufacturers are going to want to license our toggle 3D. Um, so from, from my perspective, our business model is going to shift as we get deeper and deeper into the market, as we become the de facto standard platform. Mm. And, you know, just to be clear, like we keep talking about AI and 3D models, that's not the whole picture. There's a high standard, a very high standard that you need to meet as a 3D model supplier to the Amazon platform. Everything, if you look at the, the, the products that Amazon's uh, showcasing in 3D on this site, on, on, in their app, it's photorealistic. These models look legit. They look extremely real. The pixels the number of pixels are very high and so to get to that kind of photorealism uh is not easy like you know there are other companies that make three models but again to, to be able to supply amazon to be a preferred 3d model supplier you have to be at the top of the game it's kind of like a pro basketball football player versus mm -hmm. like triple a it's not the same it is not the same so we're the pro baller with three models supplying Amazon and others. And the idea uh, is, is that when you get to that level and you're able to supply them uh, a platform that they can license, that is everybody's dream. That's their dream. They don't want to like give us purchase orders, you know, piecemeal. They just want to be able to buy as many 3D models as they possibly need. And for Amazon, um, who, who's going to be opening up their entire platform, Seller Central. You're talking millions of uh, merchants that are going to be looking for 3D model suppliers. It makes total sense for us to just license to an Amazon the entire platform and say, hey, you know, you could offer this to your entire ecosystem and the, the model making is just done autonomously and you know, Amazon just pays us again, like a monthly. Uh, okay. You know, Amazon's paying us. Walmart, Target. We that's the goal. We want to own this entire market. Toggle three D. So that's the distribution side of the market. That's where you and I go to buy products. Okay, but then you have Toggle three D. What does that represent? That represents the manufacturers, the CAD market. Same business model. We give them Toggle three D. They pay us a monthly subscription. They're able to use that as a collaborative platform for prototyping and creating 3D models at scale. But these are custom 3D models. This is where the, the, the actual products are being made, not distributed. Right? The distribution comes 
further down the food chain. So we're going to have that end-to-end -end solution. Toggle 3D is, is for manufacturers. Aortize 3D is really for the e-com uh, distributors. And then you're going to navigate your way around with ARWay. Okay. So, but, but, but what's really interesting is okay. So, what what you just kind of uh, the, the, what you just laid out is the idea of once you have this library that Amazon and everybody else licenses. I mean, we're we're moving towards that basically. Now, the, the the again, the generative AI allows you to do this stuff at scale. So, we're moving closer to that to that point. That's I think that's kind of like the breakout point because look, once you have that library, like you said, it's like kind of game over. Yeah. Uh, because Essentially, that that's the, the monopoly on th you know three D product images for e commerce. Uh, that's I mean that's it. So I mean at that's that it. point, what's the valuation? Like, what is the, that business worth? I mean, like I think that's what we should you know invest I mean, in. Is, is, is it is, I don't know? Is it one billion? And what what's the valuation when you have a you know you own that market? Because again, I'm using the industry comps, right? Yeah. Like I'm not well, making Jack, Jack if if. If if we're saying that a hundred billion is the the market size, um, why are we talking about a, a single billion? Right. Okay. No, I'm using I'm using the example of like if, if we are able to out. if we're able to corner the market, you know, I mean, look, we're not going to get a hundred billion, but the idea is is that somebody who is much a bigger player. Um, would look at it and say, like, okay, we could generate, you know, a hundred billion in revenue or what have you, off of this, off of the back of this, um, this three D parts library over a period of years. And so, how much is that worth today? You know, so they would do also, a discount. Also, the other thing is this: this also you have to look at why did Adobe buy that Figma company, right? Because they saw it as a disruptive technology, which could right. disrupt their business. So yeah. somebody out there might be looking and say, "Wow, if Nextech gets as they get closest, that could disrupt think, their business." So they no, I don't think so. Premium. No, I don't think so. So nobody, I don't think we're we're going to disrupt anybody because there's no 800 pound gorilla. There is no dominant player today mm -hmm. in the space. So who are we disrupting? Okay, right, right. Nope. We're not okay. Yeah. Could right? be a, so again, I always go back to Adobe, but maybe it's the wrong using. No, the wrong Adobe, name. Adobe. And toggle 3D will go mm. head to head, but Aortize 3D, the 3D model making, no. Okay, okay. Um, no, very interesting. Okay, so let's get to some. Um, let's get to some audience questions. We got a bunch of audience questions here. Um, okay. We, oh, spinouts. We got a lot of questions about the spinouts. We should recap where we were with the spinouts. So, so Aro was spun out. Yeah. Uh, that's trading. We have we have some questions about a, uh, AR. Then we have also Toggle 3D is up next. Yeah, yeah. So Toggle 3D is very very interesting. Um, I'm thinking in 2023, you know, we're gonna have probably two spin outs, possibly three. Although that would be a stretch. But you know, we know we there's one with Toggle 3D that we've announced. And so um, that is moving forward. It will likely be a carbon copy of ARWay in terms of the structure of the deal. The difference is, is that for investors that are looking to get into Toggle 3D, um, you can, you know, email me. You know, you got to be at least a 12-month hold kind of player this isn't about buying and flipping and you gotta you know be able to put in uh, at least 25 or fifty thousand. you know preferably even 100k uh in into that deal so you know no five thousand um, dollar investors are going to be in that deal so the idea is is i'm going to be the biggest shareholder i'm going to you know write a a, a six-figure um I think there's 10 to 100x upside in Toggle 3D. Next Tech is going to be a customer. We'll probably have a licensing deal uh, so that we can use the Toggle 3D technology indefinitely uh, because it is something that's you know going to be of value to us. But we want to open it up to everybody so that everybody uh, that 
that wants to license the platform uh, can and will. It's roughly a 90 day sprint to get Toggle 3D public. Uh, it's going to be a direct listing on the CSE and uh, we're getting a lot of interesting, a lot of interest. Yeah. Um, let's get to, oh yeah, so let's, okay, so. Uh, it's going question. to be just one last thing on Toggle 3D. It's going to be tiny in terms of the amount of capital we're raising, you know, one to two million. It's, you know, we, we don't need a ton of money, so. Yeah, but you're gonna, you know, one of the interesting things again, you know, there's gonna be two hot, there's really like two big hot themes. We're gonna see AR becoming a hot theme as Apple launches the AR glass. We already know that, right? A AI though is gonna be the, I mean, that's gonna be the thing. That's already, that's already yeah. taken off. It's already, AI, yeah. Right? So, so, I, so and, and, next, and essentially next step with these spin outs is creating its own. It's almost like an ETF, a, a universe, an ecosystem of companies and yeah. plays in those yeah. spaces. So it's uh, yeah. very, very interesting. Yeah. So, so, you know, people that think, you know, like, well, you know, we're only given a 4% stock dividend. That's not actually accurate. Let's be crystal clear. We're dividending out 20% of the shares of the spin out. That's a big dividend. On you know, and next tech's keeping uh, roughly fifty percent, and then you know we're we're raising some capital from invest new investors, but twenty percent of the shares are being dividended out, um, and so that's a lot. Like, and if you think about um, you know again holding these shares for the long term. Um, you know, these these companies could turn into unicorns. And if they do those those shares that, you know, 20 percent of a billion is 200 million dollars in value that uh, could be unlocked through these spin outs. And so, I mean, that's the idea is that we want to create value for our next tech shareholders. We want these companies to be standalone uh, public companies. Obviously, it worked with ARA. Um, there was, you know, people that were nervous, people thinking, you know, next is going to go down and, and this and that. But none of that happened. Uh, the only thing that happened is that we created value for our shareholders. And I think the same thing is going to happen uh, with Toggle 3D. Yeah, we got a lot of questions. Yeah, people. Yeah. It's, so one of the questions here is, OK, can, this is great. Can you explain for only 4 percent dividend on this? I mean, actually, yeah. So again, it's not yield, a more think of the annualized yield. It's an incredible yield of what the what next has paid out. And this person, it's yeah. So think of it like this, uh, okay. Car Car Carmen. Um, a, we are dividending twenty percent of the shares of the spinout company. If let's say we went to eight percent, you know, for next tech, that would be forty percent of the shares. You know, if we went to 10%, that would be 50% of the shares. And so it's like, you know, we're, we're giving a, a, a substantial chunk of the upside of, you know, free trading stock to our next tech shareholders. And um, we're, we're also retaining 50% ownership so that our, you know, the people that own next tech, you really end up with 70%. Right, fifty percent in next tech proper, and then you get a twenty percent dividend. That's seventy percent, seventy percent still controlled by next tech shareholders. Yeah, and actually, what Evan, what's the, the math on the yield? In other words, next tech technically is, is 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 a it's almost a dividend stock because of the yield that's been generated well, from the yeah. The I mean, if you think of that, yeah, if you think of uh, you know, look. If you had, and now uh, you have Toggle coming up. Yeah, you had ten thousand dollars invested in Next Tech before the spin out. You got a four hundred dollar. That's four percent, right? Four hundred dollars worth of stock in Arway. Arway at one point went up ten x, so that would have been worth four thousand uh, dollars. Today it's up, I think, about five x. So that's worth two thousand dollars. 
two thousand is a twenty on ten is a twenty percent dividend. It, That's just for warm ups, meaning. If you get that again with Toggle 3D, that's a 40% dividend. And then if you get it again, that's a 60% dividend. If you get it again, that's an 80%. If I do three or four spin outs, you might get 60 to 80% return on your money with Next Tech flatlining. Now, God forbid Next Tech starts to run, which I think it will, obviously, because we're talking about all the reasons why Next Tech is primed to run. Now, all of a sudden, it just becomes a bonanza, a bonanza, which is why I own the largest stake in Next Tech. I want it to be a bonanza. I own the largest stake in ARWay. I'm going to own the largest stake in Toggle 3D and in all our spin outs. Why? Bonanza. No, <laughs> it, you know, so here, you know, what, what, no, so the whole idea, I think, again, investors need to understand this. The great thing, I think, about Next Tech that people don't quite appreciate yet is that. You know, the focus has always been on you know creating value and, and you're doing it right now and there was like you know the spin outs and, and that, that was the first spin out there was going to be more spin outs the idea is at the end of the day the goal is it's actually it's a twofold goal is to unleash exponential revenue growth again using like chat you know whether uh, using the generative ai using those technologies which are now happening that's so that's happening now and then on top of that stack on top of that unleash <coughs> The shareholder value, which is spin outs, which create further value. So it's almost like you got you're, it's almost like a bullet train that's it's a bullet train, and then you have the Lamborghini, you know, driving on top of the bullet train. So the bullet train is going you know, 200 one. miles an hour, and the Lambo is going 200, you know, so it's like an incredible yeah, like, like, like three Lambos on top of yeah. the bullet train. Not even yeah, one. So, no, so, 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 by the way, the, the, here's the thing which, which I don't think you didn't explain is that the spin out with, with the four percent, 20 percent. That's an absolute number. That's not even annualized. If it's annualized, it would be like a 40 to 200 percent annual return. Yeah, it's a mean, crazy I, number. If you, yeah, I, mean, yeah. I mean, that's how that's how you know a, a, a hedge fund would say, "Hey, we got we're generating annualized returns of you know 200 percent or whatever the number is." I mean, that's really yeah. what we've been generating. Yeah, I think annualized. you know, APR look, investors should be thinking about the big picture, not focused on why am I getting so little? That's small thinking. Think bigger. These are big opportunities. These spin outs allow, hey, if you don't think you own enough shares in AR way, go buy some. It's public. It's okay. yeah. This is this is the problem. You give out a gift and people, you know, they don't, they don't. It's, like, it's like, okay, you want to own more? Go buy some. Yeah. So, uh, okay. Question, how many spinoffs are you anticipating for Next Tech this year? Well, Asad, I think, um, you know, we've announced that we're going to spin out Toggle 3D. That's one. And so the, the idea is, is we'll probably do another one. So it could be two. And there's a small probability of three. But I would say over the next 18 months, there's a high probability of three or potentially even four. Um, there's also some acquisition targets, as I mentioned earlier, that we're looking at. There's also some new technology that we're developing um, that could be uh, an additional future spin out. We're not done. This is just, you know, look, we proved our point with AR Way. We proved our point, which is we're able to unlock value through these spin outs. Before we did the spin out, it was a lot of uh, chatter, a lot of talk, a lot of potential, uh, but now it's in the rear view. Ring the register. ARWay was a super successful spin out. It has a valuation that's north of $30 million today. And when it was inside Next Tech, it was worth zero. So if we extrapolate out, second spin out, another 30 million, third spin out, maybe another 30 million. And also, let's be clear, this is the first. Well, first well, actually, actually it Probably. increased 10x. It increased 10x from the spin out. It did, it did. In like 10 it days. Which is, no, which, it, you know, it, I mean, it, investors don't give, you know, I think the 
we're getting question numbers. Oh, why are we only getting four percent? I mean, who else is giving? What other tech stock is giving you? A, a, what other penny stock? What other micro cap on the, in Canada is giving any dividends? Uh, it, it's it's unheard. It's really it's unheard of. And the crazy thing is, this company has has created shareholder value from day one. Investors need to keep it from the perspective. Next Tech itself was a spin out the stock. I mean. The, Jack just froze. First I froze, now Jack froze. And I have no idea if I'm actually still here and you're watching me or... Okay. Can you oh, hear me? There. Okay. Yeah, okay. you're back. It's, uh, it, it's, it's, it's internet. Okay. Um, you know, okay. Uh, so we're saying, look, the company has created value from day one. You went public. If somebody, I think it was 2018 as a, as a spin out originally, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so I think it was twenty cents. Was it? What's the number? Twenty five cents. Look, every single deal is a carbon <laughs> copy. We went public at twenty five cents. The stock went to ten dollars. ARW went public at twenty five cents. The stock so far has uh, gone as high as I think two fifty, uh, but it's still not fully developed. Meaning, I think ARW can easily be a ten dollar stock. Uh, Toggle three D is going to go public at what price, Jack? 25 cents. And guess what? Probably going to be another 10 bagger. You know, who knows? Yeah, so this is, like, this is like a stealth, you know, look, next thing in reality, this is like the best. I think this is the best kept secret in the market. It's like a stealth bull market of its own. Because if you think about it, if you look at what's happening with Canadian stocks, micro cap stocks in the last, let's call it five years. Got destroyed. Four years. Destroyed. Yeah, but, but no, they're all down from where they, next thing actually is up 300%. From uh, from from the essentially the, let's call it the IPO right and and, and it had a run to almost uh, what is it almost what is that to to, seven, to ten dollars that's a forty x four four thousand percent okay so one to four thousand that's three hundred but you know it, this is again this is this is like essentially it's it's a long term play now the plus the value created from the from the uh, from the from the spin up by the way my friend who made like fifty million with AOL. The yeah. money was because the company kept splitting and splitting. I think they also had a dividend, so it wasn't like you know those splits. Then he then he come, then he bought more. that that's how the money is made. It's not like hey, you buy the stock on a Monday, you sell it on a Wednesday, you you make a quick double. No, it's by holding it for. I think he held like five to seven. Years. It was a it's a, it's a long term play. The value ultimately next deck is going to be created uh, from the cumulative return of all the of all the dividend spinouts, everything else, and. Who knows what other technologies you're going to acquire, develop, spit out? And, you know, it's it's ultimately it's a value creation machine, which has been you know you really you know your core competency from day one. I mean, so it's like this is this is what people need to understand. It's it's amazing. It's a it's a free gift they're getting with the stock right here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. More questions. Uh, here's a great. Okay, this is, what is the reason for doing? Doesn't it reduce the value? Can you address this one last one last time? Should we address this? Sue. So one last time, Sue. We're oh. unlocking the value. There's value that gets zero valuation. It doesn't reduce the value of Next Tech by losing some of its technology. No. Two reasons why. One is we license the technology. So we still have access to that tech that we created. So it's not like we, we don't own the tech. We can't ever use the tech. We can't. Number two is we still own 50% of the upside. We still own 50% of the shares of the spin out. So, I mean, we get the best of both worlds. We get uh, to dividend out shares to our shareholders. We get to create value where inside Next Tech, there was zero value for ARWA. ARWA was not getting any valuation. Next Tech did not go down, our way uh, go up by $50 million. That didn't happen. And so if you look at um, these spin outs, we will be able to continue to create value for our shareholders, uh, unlock the value that's trapped inside of Next Tech in these uh, technologies and businesses. So it's, it's actually the opposite of reducing Nextech's value, we're increasing our value. If you look at ARWay, 
we own $16 million worth of stock in AR. And stock is up from where you first announced. Next thing is higher today from one. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. we own $16 million worth of AR waste. So is that worth something to next tech? I think it is before really? the spin out. We had zero. And a really interesting question. So generative AI will generative AI disrupt next tech will create AR maps on demand 3d models. If Google is in code red, what about you? <laughs> no, we're not in code red at all. Um, we're, we're using the generative AI to create 3D models at scale with our parts-based library. Nobody else is doing that. Nobody else can do that. Um, and as far as uh, the, the maps for ARWay, uh, it's not actually using uh, that kind of AI to create the maps. So it's, it's different technologies. We're not threatened, in fact, we're stronger because we're now using AI to, to help us uh, scale our business. Um, interesting question. So will next step retain the patents and IP or will spinoffs on the tech? When we spin uh, these companies out, they own, they're going to own the patents. They're going to own the IP. But remember, we control 50%. <laughs> so we will still retain a massive ownership stake. And so that, you know, that's really the bottom line. Uh, okay. So yeah, I, I actually, I have, there's a video. I, I was Keith. I was, uh, yeah, Jack was at CES. Uh, cause Jack actually lives right down the block from CES. So he just <laughs> walked over there <laughs> and went in. Way. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, and, and a video. I mean, it's it's a hundred percent right. I mean, if that's a massive, you know, there's a video I think on, on Twitter. The show. So I mean, our our oh, event yeah. platform, our next tech event solutions platform, is going to be launching the AR way wayfinding uh, in the in the Map Dynamics app, uh, which is being integrated, um, and so that's all happening now. So all these events that you're going to are going to have the AR way wayfinding. That's going to happen in 2023. Yes. Uh, okay. Interesting question from Dil Sher is uh, AR. So yeah. So we have they not unless they're integrated with the glasses. It doesn't just happen. Um, you know, we have to actually integrate. So if you think about Apple. Uh, launching their computer glasses. We are in the Apple App Store. Uh, Samsung launches a pair of glasses. We'll be, you know, App Store uh, with the Google apps. And so, um, if if you're if the glasses come out with the Apple App Store, um, you'll be able to use our tech in the Apple glasses. But you know, a lot of this is just early days. So we're going to be integrating with a number of glass companies so that you will be able to use the AR way maps and see the 3D models in a multitude of glasses, not just the Apple glasses. You know, think of HoloLens and uh, Magic Leap. Okay. Um, filters trying. Okay. Uh, yeah, we are working on filters so that people could try on. Yeah. Okay. Uh, can you? Elaborate. How, okay, so how, how? Okay, so I think you kind of touched on it. One last, one last. So the the the, the AI patent that you just announced yesterday. Competitive advantage in a nutshell. Well, the the AI is allowing us to scale by you know using this parts based library. The AI is able to go in uh, using computer vision and generative AI to create more and more value. More, you know, I mean, if you, if you look at our patent application, we've actually filed and you can see the number uh, online and you could read it if you want, but uh, it's, it's a competitive advantage because it keeps our competitors out of the market. Uh, was that, was, okay, so uh, I think some people are asking, is there a, a research report that said that the deals with Target and Walmart are, are so, signed? So, so I would just say that unless Next Tech proper 
puts out a press release, everything is just, you know, rumors, right? We have to be the ones to put out the news. Uh, you can't have a third party put out news. So um, unless we're putting it out, I, I would not uh, take it to the bank. Uh, okay, interesting question here. Uh, so why is it the market value, you know, why are you spinning at these, uh, why are you doing these spins at, at such low valuations to start if these are, you know, unicorn potential? So you tell me what it's worth, Dolly. What's it worth? Buy, buy the open these market. Are, Great these are, no, these are private enterprises um, that, that we are valuing. Uh, based on uh, hiring a third-party independent v business evaluator. And, you know, they're, they're pre-revenue, right? So these are, you know, commercialized businesses that have not generated revenue, uh, but that product is ready to be uh, sold. So how much do you, uh, what, what value do you want to put on them? I mean, how do you value it? How do you value it? I'm saying they're worth a billion. They're not worth a billion today. They're only worth a billion as they scale and generate revenue, which has not happened yet. So you can't value it today based on the potential of the billion in revenue, right? Or or the billion dollar. So, you know, you have to, you could buy the spinoff, like I said, if you send me a, a an email if you're a long-term holder and uh, you could put in some, you know, capital, uh, we will, uh, yeah. So you can email me. My email is evan at nexttechar.com and uh, we'll put you on the list. Um, but it's going to be a small list and uh, we're, we're primarily looking for uh, larger investors that, again, are not looking to sell um, for at least 12 months. I mean, this would be for what? Credit investors mostly? Uh, yeah, yeah. Is yeah, credit investors, right? So it's a private, yeah. it's a private placement, essentially, that they're buying. Exactly, in. So, exactly. Yeah. exactly. And, and, you know, in theory, you know, I mean, we're not, again, we're not making solicitation, whatever. I mean, in theory, if somebody buying private placement, there's always a risk, right? It's like, hey, it's hundred percent high risk, high reward. Right. Not for widows and orphans, right? This is like the stock itself is not. I mean, we're not here to. This is these are these are you know these emerging growth stocks is basically public venture capital. So yeah, yeah, you know, I, I think yeah. people need to understand that with anything here. Uh, okay, uh, interesting comment. So with the parts library generator, this is looking very similar to Chat GPT. So essentially, next deck is like the Chat GPT of three D models. That's kind of what we're saying. Yeah, is that we're we're creating that. Um, we're creating that. And that's actually why I think Next Tech is so undervalued right now is because, you know, we people just look at the surface level. That's it. They look at surface level information. But when you start to peel back the layers of the onion in Next Tech, not only do we have, uh, you know, generative AI that, that can create 3D models at scale, but we also have a 50% stake in AR way, we're 16 million today, toggle 3D, another spin out, and more spin outs coming. And they're all in the sweet spot. They're all in this 3D AI uh, market. You have a CEO who relentlessly uh, is, is, uh, is going out there and telling the story <laughs> over and over again to try and- uh, even, even in a bad market, this, again, this is really, what separates next tech from you know the whole entire micro cap i'm not even not even micro cap like the the growth space in general most of these companies whether it's nasdaq small caps you know or, or companies in the, in the csc tsx whatever you know they're all been in hiding they're not they're not returning phone calls in the last six months i mean this yeah. is how many companies yeah. do you see you know engaging with investors so i i think again this is a this bodes very well Again, you know, these bear markets, they, they bring clarity. It's, you know, it's now you can actually see who the real, you know, which which are the real companies, which which are the real the real players here. Yeah. Um, and you know, I noticed it's interesting, Jack. Like there's a there's a potential, you know, short squeeze brewing 
um, as well. So, you know, like Next Techs in the past, uh, they were people that shorted the stock. They only had to cover at much, much higher levels. Um, I think something like that is brewing again. So I think there's the potential uh, to see some some interesting uh, action in the stock. No, I mean, the trucks definitely look like there's it like a real setup for it to kind of uh, break out here. So that's, that's definitely. Yeah, I'm kind of surprised, you know, where, where the share price is. It just kind of drifted out lower towards the end of the year. Yeah. Um, so, okay, Evan, on that note, let's kind of wrap up here. Uh, let's, I think it's important really to, to focus on kind of the big long term vision. Because, you know, a lot, I mean, we, haven't, we haven't really addressed this in a while, but look, the reality is people are very focused on these like near term things, next week's news, this contract, that right. contract. But overall, you know, the, 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 over the whole arc of the next tech, I mean, the company, again, the stock is up 300% in the last couple of years from, from you know, from what's taught from the time it went public, 4,000% at the peak. But still, if you bought at, the, at that thing, you would have gotten 300%. It's up, it's tripled since June, since the June low. Um, Long term, what do you see, like, what is this company going to look like? Let's just say three years from now, because again, I really believe that we're at the start right now, whether it's now or next, the next bull market, which is going to be driven by AI. I don't know if yeah. this market, that bull market is going to start, you know, it's already started or it's going to start in two months, three months, whatever it is. There's no question that it's going to be driven by AI. And yeah. again, we've seen these markets, they they go higher than the last one because everything with, a, with AI, all of a sudden everything becomes exponential. Yeah, I mean, well, just, AI really is exponential ai changes the game ai never gets tired never sleeps doesn't eat any food you know it's not like us humans and you know doesn't get depressed <laughs> doesn't that doesn't go doesn't it doesn't go through all the, the trials and raise. tribulations you know the ups and downs right. and so ai is going to create trillions and trillions of dollars in value i'm totally aligned with sequoia that AI is going to change the game. It's already being used, by the way. You know, if you look at the black box and hedge funds and the, you know the trading in the market, it's all driven by AI. And so, you know, that's like you know financial uh, mathematical algorithms. But now it's being unleashed, unleashed into our world, the real world, where the metaverse is going to be using AI. Machine learning is going to be uh, standardized in in our lives, and next tech really is waving the flag. We're at the forefront between Toggle 3D, which is an AI-based 3D design studio, ARWay, which is an AI-based uh, wayfinding, really spatial computing platform, next tech, which is an AI-based 3D model factory. All those three businesses combined, Jack, I believe. Each one of them would be worth many, many billions of dollars in market cap over the coming years. I don't think it's unreasonable. I think it's just a question of execution, execution, execution. We have to execute now. The technology is there. I do think the winds of change are blowing, where the, the bear market in 2022 essentially probably ended uh, in, in Q4 and the reason why is because everybody got extremely negative. You know, people were thinking um, Europe's going into a recession. The U.S. is going into a recession. China is going into a recession. For all these different reasons, you know, interest rates were just, you know, running wild. And so all that happened. You even had FTX collapse, which was a big deal. But guess what? The market now looks like it's turning. And if the market can turn in the face of that kind of negativity, um, it does kind of set the stage for a bull market. I've also been feeling kind of exhausted from all the negative news over the past 12 months. That's usually, which, the, that's usually indicates the bottom. Right? When that's you, usually the bottom. That's if I'm feeling really yeah. yeah, exhausted, right? Yeah, so investors, yeah, investors are all like really like so, disgusted. With so when the, when the market gets its mojo back, I do believe that Next Tech and all of our uh, stocks that we spin out are in the right 
market sector, the right place, right time. And again, the revenue, the execution, all of that is going to happen. Uh, stay tuned for our 2022 numbers, which um, are coming out quite quite soon. Uh, the prelim numbers, anyway, and uh, and then off to the races in 2023. Okay, Evan. On that note, thank you, uh, and uh, we look forward to getting a follow-up for, for you in the next couple of weeks. Thank you, everybody, for joining our live stream, and uh, yep. see you in the next one.